experience the thrilling world of dirt track racing at Oshuiken Speedway, your ultimate destination for heart-pounding action in Ontario. Every Friday, tune into G-Force TV or witness the excitement live as top-tier sprint cars, mini stocks, thunder stocks vie for victory on the track. Owned by renowned Canadian Motorsport Hall of Famer Glenn Styers and skillfully run by our friend General Manager Clinton Jeffrey, Oshweek and Speedway promises an unforgettable evening of short track dirt racing. Picture the adrenaline charge scene with drivers going side by side delivering jaw dropping performances that will keep you on the edge of your seat. Don't miss out on the Friday night excitement and mark your calendars for the upcoming Sprint Car Nationals with a whopping $20,000 prize on September 14th. The lineup doesn't stop there. From the NASCAR Canada Series on dirt in July to the UMP Modifieds, 360 Sprint Cars, Crates, Mini Stocks, Thunder Stocks, Vintage Modifieds, Flat Track Motorcycles, and a myriad of other thrilling races, Oshuiken Speedway has something for every racing enthusiast visit oshwikenspeedway.ca now and gear up for an adrenaline filled experience like no other Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Stickers and Scuffs podcast as we wrap up Oshweek and Speedway Month. It kind of seems fitting that we would wrap it up with uh, th the names behind Oshweek and Speedway, the faces, the TikTok stars themselves, Glenn Styers and Chantel. I don't know what, what we go with Chantarelli, right? Chantarelli. Yeah, Chantarelli. Uh, NASCAR Canada Series championship uh winners uh on board the 20 car last year maybe this year as well who knows uh i don't even know if there's a list long enough to list everything that you guys are a part of so uh i think great. we can fill an episode just introducing all the things the hats that you guys wear so <laughs> <laughs> yeah i might have to do that actually tv stars as well yes i guess we should mention that uh yeah. badass racers uh yeah pretty pretty fun uh conversation and of course we had to do this on episode 160 just for you glenn styers uh mm. welcome to the show chantal chantarelli and <laughs> glenn i was gonna butcher it i knew i was gonna butcher it uh welcome to the show all right we made it <clears throat> <laughs> guys um You've probably heard this a bunch of times, Glenn, uh, since the inception of Oshweek and Speedway, um, the Field of Dreams analogy. You built it. He came, he came, she came, they came, everybody comes. And it's not just Canada, it's North America and uh, has become a renowned um, destination uh, for dirt racing. My question to you, Glenn, why? What was the motivation back in the 90s? This had to have started with uh, a pretty grand vision. Um, for for me, <clears throat> my uncle took me to um, a thousand races, like mm -hmm. go kart, uh, drag racing, um, oval racing, Lancaster. Like, just took me to all these races. And um, when I was a kid, and unfortunately, he was in a severe car accident when I was probably seven years old. So I lost him. From that point on, um, holy. <laughs> From that point on, I um, it, it was. Oh, I'm gonna get choked up. Oh my god! I didn't mean to do it right off out of the box. <laughs> I, I didn't. I haven't thought about that in a long time, yeah. right? But anyways, <clears throat> I think that when I started building this track, mm -hmm. it was uh, all, if you noticed, all the colors were orange. Mm -hmm. That was in memory of Frankie. Oh, there it goes again. 
I'm trying to I'm trying to maintain myself. This is so difficult. Um, anyways, to make a long story short, mm -hmm. uh, he took me everywhere. I built this and just continued to build it. And I'm telling you, it was a struggle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It wasn't it wasn't easy. And uh, you know, my brothers, my sisters, my mom, everybody be, played a big part in this. Um financially you know what i mean i was the one doing all of the work and putting all of the earth you know earth movers and and lucky there was a i, I just say it has to be fate because there was a hundred houses being built in the village right and all of that dirt needed to go someplace <laughs> right at that time i was building and designing this track and they carried all of the dirt. They had to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. So they just cut through the field and just laid it in place. Right. So there's a hundred basements there building that track. And um, so I thought I was just going to race uh, Sunday, Sunday mm -hmm. afternoons, but it was just too dusty. Right. So when I, I was racing at Flambro a little bit, and my my first plan was to build an asphalt track. That's what I was going to do because I remember always looking up to these um, asphalt owners when they were doing their drivers meetings and doing all of these yeah. things, right? And so I was like, that, "That's that's what I want to do right there. I want to be an owner and promoter, right?" Well, I went on a trip and I was in Florida and. Uh, I'm, I'm on the balcony and I can hear these buzzing engines. I have no idea what it is. Right. And so I jump in the car and I follow that noise. Right. They didn't have cell phones and stuff back then. Right. So here I am, I pulled into this and I don't even remember where I was. Could have been East Bay far as I know. I don't know. And, um, it was a dirt track and I was like, Oh my God, I had no idea that they raced on, they, they wet it down and, that's where you race. So my plan switched right from right from asphalt to dirt. And and my primary reason was I went to New Smyrna and the bleachers were empty. I go to Volusia Speedway and people are falling out of the rafter. Like they're so jammed and the, the, the racing's insane and it's fast and and uh so so that's where it went. But I had no idea how difficult it was going to be because um, there's no manual for it. There's not something you can just look up and say, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. So I met this guy that built roads and I just pulled him over on the side of the road. And I said, can you lay this out? And he come over and he laid it out. He guided all the dirt and put it all in place. And, and uh, now what, you know, <laughs> fencing, fencing was a hundred thousand dollars. So I went and bought $10 blocks and that's how I did the, the outline of the track, the retaining wall. And then I did the bottom. And, um, so then I built eight foot fences and I'm telling you within, within no time cars were clearing the fence. So I had no idea that they would clear a fence. So then I made them 12 feet Well, they were still clearing the fence. So then I made them 16 feet just in the, in the impact points where they were going over, right? Yeah. And um, Kovac Electric, he says, Glenn, you can't race Sundays. Um, he says, I'm taking lights down in the parking lot. He goes, I'll put them up for you. Don't even worry about paying them, pay me for it. Um, just, just I'll, I'll, I'll do it. And if you can pay me, you can pay me. And if you can't, you can't, right? He didn't care. Anyways, um, next thing i know i'm switching to friday nights and these lights are pitiful like i look at videos from a long time ago and you can't see nothing like it's dark and dusty and and uh i don't have a big water truck like like i said it was a. Uh, it was i wish he's it was, been through a lot i wish it was, <laughs> i wish there was videos of me doing this because i remember going around with the road grader and the cylinder breaking and me going around with a with a ratchet trying to jack up that blade as we're driving around and 
Um, the funniest thing is the uh, water truck, because we didn't have levers to turn the water off and on. So I'd honk the horn and we'd turn the water on and honk the horn and turn the water off. And, and then, um, you know, we blew the motor in a water truck and towed it with a tractor. I had to borrow my neighbor's tractor and, and, bed uh, frames. yeah. So, so there was a bed frame and an old Ford tractor because everything leaked so bad. I was like pumping the blade up and trying to get it up and, and so I drug this uh, I-beam and a bed spring behind the road grader to mm -hmm. fill everything that, because that blade kept digging the big ruts in them, right? And I was like, oh, my God. It was, <laughs> it was, uh, it was, it was quite the battle. And to sleep <laughs> today um, and the sleepless nights, oh, my God. You just, you just can't even imagine. I wish I would have did a journal this whole time, you know? But even now. Oh, no. Even now, after the races, he's out on the track. We're out on the track in the tractor, doing whatever needs to yeah. be done. It's it's a lot of work behind the scenes. He's he's always out there. I it's love that lot. you're the opera. Like that's my say. bread and butter too. I <laughs> yeah. love that you're the guy out there in the machines doing the work. Like that's that's awesome. So many so many people come up to me, and they were like, "Glenn, I thought you were just one of the workers here." <laughs> Sorry, man. Need <laughs> <laughs> <Can> we help? <laughs> Well, that's why it's so important for to have Chantel, right? Because you say, obviously, those tough days, you're going to need somebody to, that's going to be the support system for you, right? How did you guys get get involved with the the motorsports thing together? Oh, three years ago. Well, you brought your kids over to the races. Oh yeah, so so I had a bad crash. Oh, she was gosh. helping my head because I was I had scrambled yolk. Taking bad time. Bad yeah. time. Yeah. Big and, time. I and then we just become that. we just become friends and then we just start hanging out. And so yeah. my kids and her kids, we were going to the aquarium and just doing different things together. And next thing you know, we're uh best friends. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like who doesn't love having a ride or die and someone that you can work with, I mean, to a to a different angle. Cam and I kind of understand where you can hang out with someone, but really it's just kind of serendipitous, dumb luck, whatever you want to call it, that you have the chemistry, that you work so well together, and you can kind of have that symbiosis where you have, like, where you're having a bad day, the other one's there to kind of shore you up and vice versa. Kind of well, talk about that vibe. Week last week. <laughs> I was <laughs> so tired. <laughs> We've been going like, a lot. I'm like, don't even worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, because you guys are going all over the place all all the time, really. It seems like you guys are out somewhere else. And I imagine the organization that get has that. to be put in place is a lot. So get he has this. a leprechaun. He has a leprechaun. He's my leprechaun. <laughs> so, guess, so guess what? So we were looking at the weather. Maryville's getting rained out. So I said, all right, we're going to go further. We checked the weather. It was only 30% chance of rain. And we get down to Fonda, and unfortunately, it rained, and it rained out both nights. Um, but if it's within four or five hours, I got trailers loaded. We can mm -hmm. race anything. We can race uh, three fifty eight modified, big block modified, four ten sprint car, three sixty um, pro late model. If it's not raining and there's a race somewhere, our guys are ready. <laughs> That's awesome. And the dedication, like speaking to that, Glenn, like you, you're, well, as you said, you kind of had the interest in going asphalt initially. You're, you're renowned for being the dirt racer, but now you're also really uh, kind of flexing the, the asphalt discipline. What's that like bringing all that to life, like having the, the asphalt side coming to life now too? So I'll tell you how that happened. I was um, in a meeting with um, Pinty's NASCAR when I was Pinty's NASCAR. And uh, I said, what can I do to promote the race at a Schwigan Speedway? They said, race with our group. Get a car. So I said, <laughs> all right, order me two cars. So we ordered two, well, four cars. And um, so that's what happened. And I thought it was going to be easy, easier than it's been. Unfortunately, I got steered down the wrong path. Mm -hmm. And um, I, have to, had to, I had to deal with some circumstances beyond my control. And so now it 
put me in a position to say, okay, well, if that can't happen the way I want it to happen, I got to do it myself. Mm-hmm. So this that's is why this is here. That's why we are here yeah. today. And um, I'm doing everything. Pull down rig. I uh, got guys in here full time. Um, <laughs> we're bringing in our own CNC machines to build all of our own motors. So it's it's going to be a state of the art facility. And hopefully it'll be a one stop shop that I can get the people in place. So if anybody needs anything, I'm going to be able to support them. Like they've never been supported before. Yeah. And that goes on all sides, right? You're going to try and be that for everything. Everything. Yeah. I think that I can cut costs a lot for people. I know how expensive it is to race. I know how, um, I just know, I just know how difficult it is and you need, you need the parts, you need the infrastructure, you need it in place. And if you don't have it, it's a struggle. And sometimes it's a long time to be able to get something. I'm building a new facility over at, um, at the speedway now, and, uh, I'm going to be able to support all the classes. Anybody that comes there, I'm going to have it full. You're going to be able to walk in and build a car if you have to. For the love of racing, like that's the, the, like you, you do this, you're building the, the together, the GSR brand uh, with the parts, the chassis and all that stuff. You don't have to, but you do because the love of racing. Yes. 100%. One hundred percent. I um, I I think that. It, it, so I still really don't know what angle I'm taking here. Yeah. I, I kind of explain to people it's like a Ouija board, you know. If yeah. our building is where I go and get taken in that direction, yeah. that's the direction I go. If it's pro late model, if it's super late model, that's the direction I'm gonna go. If it's building engines, I'll go that way. Whatever one needs me, that's the direction I will go. And he's very good at feeling that out. Very good. He just, he has that sense of what feels good to him. That's where he goes. And that's always where it's needed. It's really miraculous. I talk Seems about, like it works out pretty well for you so far. No, it's not bad. <laughs> I, talk about, I talk about elevation. You know what yeah. I mean? If somebody's struggling, if I could step up and get them to the next level, that's where I come in. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Chantel, how did you get, like, how did, wh- how, where did you get into racing? Like, were you into racing before you met Glenn or? I've always been a car girl. I was actually in the automotive industry for 15 years. So cars, a little bit of a different story, obviously, but I was always very interested in cars. And um, yeah, I just, Glenn, my kids, we went to watch Glenn race and they got excited about it and we got excited about it. So it just become a thing. I'm still learning. There's still lots to learn about all of these different cars, but so her son's racing, racing yeah. the um crate class, and her daughter's racing the May stock class. So cool. we'll just see how far it goes. And we're not putting any pressure on them. If they don't feel like racing, they don't have to. And if they yeah. wanna like like she calls me up and says, I need another car for parts. I said, Let's get it, you know. Mm-hmm. So so we're I'm doing whatever I can to get them in. I don't want to hand it all to them and yeah. make it so easy they got to work for it they don't just get broden, a free ride broden asked if he could take friday off so he can come here and work on his car so he can practice friday nice <laughs> when is when chantel going to get behind the wheel and race we're trying we, i we, i don't have time <laughs> so, the leprechaun has to plan all the things behind the scenes in order to get some stuff so up. so trey and labsovich has a great car here we were going to put a mm. um a a poor seat in a it. A poor maybe. seat in it and get Chantel doing laps. So at least she gets the feel of mm-hmm. what it's like and how it is. But, you know, these cars, they're so expensive and it takes so much manpower, so much hours. And to get a tiny little seat moved up closer, <laughs> like every time <laughs> I get in my truck, <laughs> I bang my face off the dash. <laughs> Because yeah, she's sorry. got it like right up, like yeah. right up. I'm, I'm, I'm only five foot two. So, you know, five foot nothing. <laughs> my wife and I have that similar height discrepancy too. There's about a foot difference between us. So you got to hit that memory recall on the seat before. <laughs> I did get to drive, it's all bruised. I did get to <laughs> Corvettes at CTMP and I really liked that a lot. I oh, was so going to say, I saw it like sports car racing. There we go. You yeah. got to start a sports car. Uh, Racing team there, eh, Glenn? <laughs> <Do it. laughs> 
market. You guys have um, like in for the interest of developing your asphalt and road racing discipline. I know you spent a bit of time with my buddy Daniel Bois. He uh, he lives not ten minutes from my house, so uh, I saw you guys got to have a bit of fun out at uh, CTMP with him before, right? Yeah. So so I went down there and um, we rented this two seater truck. I had yeah. no idea it was going to make me sick. Yeah. We did two laps and I was so sick. I, I couldn't be a passenger going back and forth like that. And yeah, so I'm the same. We parked it and I was green all day. Oh. So we bought a simulator and we're gonna we're gonna be doing uh practicing together. Mm -hmm. He'll be able to run from his house and he's gonna get me set up here tomorrow so that we can actually I can follow cool. and he'll be able to show telemetry and acceleration and slow down and turn and pick up points and all of that stuff so i mean in terms of like a racer i mean dan and in terms of a teacher i mean you can tell he's got it right i mean he knows how to like convey that information to you and and really verbalize those kind of things that you got to work on he's so good at it yeah 100 yeah. what's the uh what's the goal this year glenn <laughs> i know you got a lot on the plate so oh, so well, you know, I crashed pretty severely a few years ago. Yes. I thought I thought it was absolutely done. Um, I'm just starting to run up front now. Um, I've had a couple of uh, podium finishes. I led a bunch of laps. Um, I almost got a couple of Gators in Florida. Last um, race we were at with Schrader, he beat Schrader. So <laughs> that's a good. That's pretty good. <laughs> so. so um, I'm getting close. I'm getting dialed in. So you say, what do you want to do? I, um, I want to start playing around with the top 10, you know, and then hopefully get into the top five and hopefully maybe see victory lane. Um, I just know that I have the cars to do it now. And in the last two years, I was spooked. So I got to regain that confidence, start believing that I can do it. And it's going to just take a while to build that trust because it was so, it was so, um, lost, you know, I was so, uh, so scared. Let's put it that way. That's a, like, you have to trust, like you said, implicitly the equipment you're in because you're putting all of yourself and getting every last bit you can out of that thing. And if it's not going to, if you're, you're trying to take care of it and it's not going to take care of you, that's not a really, really good working relationship then, is it? Yeah. I, I try to tell people, I said, I said, um, and I, and I talk a lot of, about a lot of like gymnast and a lot of acrobatic stuff. The brain is very, very smart. Like if you can train it to do things, it, it'll, it knows if it can do it or not. Mm -hmm. You can't force it. And if you try to force it, not a good result's going to happen. So, yeah. um, I, I always try to explain it in a way that, um, your brain, your brain is very very like the sensitivity and and the breaking and it just knows if, if it's not going to make it it's not going to make it you know mm -hmm. and i was in um new smyrna and i had a couple of the uh the guys that i was racing with saying you know what just floor it, it's gonna stick <laughs> and i it's not gonna stick they're going it's gonna stick i'm like it didn't stick um and i floored <laughs> and i'm like I'm giggling, fishtailing. I'm like all the way down the front straight. So I did it again, sideways, all the way around the corner. I come in. I said, I told you it didn't stick. They were like, oh, you might have gassed it too hard. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, how do you gas it harder than the floor? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it was really, it was really good. And, um, and, and what was good about it was I reached past the point. Right. I like I overdrove the car, which I knew it wasn't going to be able to do. But in turn, they were able to tighten my car up better so that I could floor it. Right. Perfect. So it worked out and they had to force me to get to that next level. Right. And here's a good point that I don't think a lot of people know. He had knee surgery after that. So okay. he had been driving in a car with there's a there was a chunk of bone in his knee. So now that that chunk of bone's gone, I had to drive with severe pain all the time. Like, like, um, one to 10, a 10, nine out of 10, always swollen up, yeah. always limping, always hobbling, always severe pain gone. 
Well, that's got to be a bit of a help for the focus perspective, right? <laughs> I and googled pain. it. I googled it and asked if this pain could be a distraction for driving and if it could ruin concentration. Man, it was every, <laughs> pain. every single just article. A little. Oh. Yeah. So now I get in the car. I can just. I don't have to worry about my knee throbbing, right? I can just drive now. This is so pain now. It's gone. The surgeon was actually really excited, saying that he was playing operation and didn't know what was in there. And he'd come out and he's like, look at this piece of bone. <laughs> but, but if you think about it, he was driving incredibly. For 20 years, you were in pain with that piece of bone in there. Yeah, I had a bad sprint car crash and uh, my knees hit the steering. I, I busted both kneecaps, right? So, <laughs> yeah, and, and it chipped my knee. So, uh, and I would wiggle it around and I would bend again and it would get jammed up again and... I'd go into the get an MRI and they said there's nothing wrong with it. And yeah, they found it. You sprint car guys wreck hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't do it easy, do you? You do a nice complicated one. Yeah, I mean, it, right. It, I mean, you had one last year with the with Aaron as well, I believe. And it was just it's like uh anytime you go out there, I I, I say it before, I've said it on this podcast that dirt racing is really hard for me to watch <laughs> because Unfortunately, you know, some of my favorite racers that have been in bad racks, um, you know, uh, and, and yourself included. Um, but I guess you just get past it, eh? Like it after that big wreck, you, you got back behind the wheel. So well, what happened was I was worried about having a big crash and thinking that it was going to mess me up again. Mm -hmm. I jumped on. I'm like, I'm fine. I'm like, I'm good. And I hit it full tilt like 120 was, miles an hour yeah. like and my car was our cars were disintegrated Both like they them. they just yeah. blew apart and i aaron i think he was knocked out but i was fine wow God. i just i I, <laughs> I don't know i guess it's something about the the sprint car guys that you guys just you know you 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 can see i guess the energy a lot more dissipating with the rolling and um you know it uh it always just, it terrifies me watching it. So I can't imagine Chantel what it's like. Well, that crash, I was up in the VIP suites recording and I, you could, I was recording, see him flip. And then all you see is the camera going like running down the stairs. <laughs> you had to go make like, sure he Chantel, was okay. You I mean, can't, you yeah. got to get off of the track. You can't be down here. <laughs> just you kind of assume the role of chief worrying officer, right? Chantel? Yeah. but i'll tell yeah. you my, my first crash that i had um and i had just my two daughters right and everyone was saying you're not going to see them graduate you're going to be a vegetable you're not going to be able to and they're like you need to retire right i didn't win another race for two years my girls were crying dad don't race anymore right you're oh gonna get God. And, and then i crashed I was like, I'm not going to die. And then I crashed again. I'm not going to die. I start winning again. <laughs> it took two years off for that that fear, mm -hmm. body preservation, you know? That's it. Like for, for everyone involved to be able to get everyone at peace with it. Like at the same time, you're trying to do the dad thing and, and comfort your kids. But inside, I mean, you still got that competition fire that, you got to scratch that itch, right? Yeah, so he's a racer to heart. And he said to me, I want to retire on my own terms. I want. Right. Exactly. Like, oh, yeah. retire on my 60th year. And I'm like, no, you're not. Now this <laughs> is like the most cars he's ever driven in one season. Hell yeah. That's the way to do <laughs> yeah, it. There you go. <laughs> and now I saw that you have plans for a modified too. So what's going on with that? Uh, Glenn, are we going to see you in the modifieds? Oh, they're, um, they said they're about six weeks away to having that complete. So, mm -hmm. If I can fit it in my schedule, I'm going to run it for sure. Cool. And nice. So, okay. I got to ask then, Glenn, what is one thing that you haven't raced yet that you want to? Um, Pro Modified. That's uh, the uh, about 207 mile an hour uh, funny car. Right? <laughs> <Pro Modified. laughs> yeah. Although, although based on the social media, I did watch that video. It was a little loud for you, was it not? Oh yeah, that <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we both went down to what was that guy's name? The, Frank Holly. Frank Holly. Um, yeah. and then I bought it was that. a birthday present for me. 
And then I bought that 170 uh, Dodge Demon. Demon. It's like a thousand and twenty. Mm -hmm. So I want to take. I want to get Chantel <laughs> running that. You know. <laughs> I'll be the drag racer for sure. Yeah. Well, there you go. And I mean, this is the funny thing is, I looked on this uh, on on I, when I joined TikTok, and then all of a sudden, an <laughs> ad pops up, and who do I see? But Glenn Styers, uh, 39, I believe was the last count, 39 million. 200 million views now in all of the platforms. Wow. I know, it's crazy. What's funny, though, is we started that page just to keep everybody informed as to like where he was and what he was raising, etc., and we were so tired. Our flight was changed. We had just landed in where were, Hun Huntsville, 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 Alabama. And we were hungry. So I had bought him these glasses. He actually still has them on his keychain. <laughs> nice. Moving his readers, right? So he had them. <laughs> he had them and put them on. And this thing just went viral overnight. Tegan messaged him. I was like, got a viral three with like uh, three million views overnight. Ten million or t one million every day or something. It was. I don't even. I don't. I don't remember how it went, but I we think were it was shocked. like three million every day. That's insane, eh? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wow. He says. He says to me when we get together, I'm going to make you famous. And when that happened, I'm like, who's going to make who famous? <laughs> <laughs> and who would have thought it was it was over like, readers, eh? <laughs> It wasn't the racing, it was the readers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank God I had my yeah. DSI shirt on. Yeah, yeah That's exactly. Good. That's good activation right there. And Chantel, like in terms of uh -oh. the art of promoting a brand, like you're you and Glenn together right now, like the as you mentioned, the the previous colors in orange, and you've kind of uh, since revamped to your current paint schemes and they look amazing. What's it like being uh, the purveyor of this brand that's that's really gaining by leaps and bounds, Chantel. Well, I'm I'm a graphic designer by trade, so when cool. it comes to colors and stuff, I'm like I we tried. Her. Yeah, we tried for three years now to get rims that actually match the car, and I'm mm -hmm. so excited because we finally Hawaii blue is the color of it. And oh my it, god, nice. So good. And Steve Lyons is amazing at putting whatever I have in my head onto print. And then the guys at Epic too, both Bob and Dan are very good with working with what I see and putting I mean, it out. Check this out. Yeah. It looks like a race suit. Like I know. I was going to comment like that. I haven't <laughs> so seen that cool. anywhere uh, other than it's right here. That's home. pretty awesome. I'm like, where's mine? How come I don't have one of those? At home. <laughs> there. Yeah, waiting on you, Bob and Dan. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's everywhere. It's the GSR is is the brand, and everybody knows it, um, and everybody knows what it stands for, and it continues. Whether you're dirt gross. or asphalt, yes, right? that's the beauty of it. You guys are building something that transcends whatever discipline of racing you're from. Yeah, it's really interesting. When we went to Fonda, and I wake up the next day, I got another thousand followers. Mm -hmm. Like it's just amazing how. Me just racing at one track. Mm -hmm. They're asking next time you come this way, bring hoodies Here. and and t-shirts and stuff because yeah. we didn't we haven't really carried anything and no. we got to start asked everywhere. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's the thing I think that I mean even with the NASCAR Canada series, you need we need that like that that is how you build fan bases and and that's some really nice given. Yes. Yes, exactly. Uh, like a bunch of lanyards that we may have gotten at the racetrack from you guys. Um, and, and we still have uh, those that we give away. And it, it But that's how you build fans because all of a sudden people will say, oh, I want that. I want a shirt that has this on it. Uh, you know, and, and then you see it in so many different places and you're building this massive shop. You've built GeForce TV. You've built Oshweekin Speedway. Gee, I wonder what else is left. I mean, really... Um, geez, Graydon, I don't know. Um, I think you could do like a like a a Styers e carding facility to rival tags. I'm just saying. I mean, there's there's a lot of options out there, Glenn. What's well, in the What's in the mind for for next? What's the next big project? Um. So so right now, my whole goal. If anybody says, Glenn, what the hell are you doing? Um, I want to build my own car. I want to have my own brand. And I want to race my own car and I want to win with my own car. 
So when you say, what are you doing? That's what my, that's what my ultimate goal is. And, um, and, um, yeah, I'm in, I'm hitting in that right direction. So even with my engines, I want to build my own engines and race with my own stuff. Take right? it from top to bottom. Glenn so, Sires, everything. So once, once, um, I get to where I need to be, um, I'm building another building this size beside us. And, uh, you're going to see all brand new CNC machines coming in. I'm going to be manufacturing all of my own components. So that's, that's my next, like, like I said, I want to be able to make all my own parts while I'm sleeping. If that makes <laughs> sense. Well, it's also good because it's, it's building actually great. I'm just going to say that the, it, yeah. what you're doing, it's similar to what Corey McAllister and two speed motorsports are doing is you're putting it here. You're building it here. It's in Ontario. It's not being outsourced anywhere. And that is remarkable in itself because it isn't something that we've seen here. And to the at the level that you're building it as well, uh, it, it's really it's great outlook for motorsports as a whole to have a facility that is dedicating itself to building the future for motorsports. Yeah, I, I think um, one of the other things that I have, I've been so I have this drone. I I have about 40 acres in the back. I want to build another test facility. Um, it may be an asphalt track that uh, we may be competing at. I don't know yet, but we'll see. It will be. Don't state. tease us, Glenn. Don't <laughs> tease us like this. <laughs> so we get it done. So if I'm building my cars and we can test it, look out, right? Yeah. That, I, <laughs> it's so cool that like the, the things that, you're doing don't just help the racing world it helps local like it's jobs it's it, it's helping the economy around you i mean it, it's you're really being a destination race facility an employer i mean it's just a remarkable thing to see and and it's encouraging as fans of racing and purveyors of racing that this industry exists and and you can make a go of it yeah, one of the things that I also want to do is with the local kids in my community, being able to build a, a facility and a brand where if they're interested in this, I can train them. I yeah. can I can show them that what the possibilities it are. And um yeah, it's it's gonna be incredible to uh to be able to do all of this stuff and give kids hope, I guess, is the best way to describe it for me. He already does that with the kids at the go-kart track in the backyard so i don't doubt yeah the little o track i mean that's a cool thing comes back there and they're all running to glenn yeah so he, yeah. he gives a lot of people a lot of hope you're kind of like santa at your north pole and you got all <laughs> santa the stars. there we go i like it santa stars yes it works <laughs> and so there you go Chantel. there's the new brand activation there we go <laughs> Santa Styers every every uh every month. I mean, I'm gonna put it out there and because I feel like um there's also gotta be a tough side of it too. Because I imagine and and I know that Corey's talked about this before, you get a lot of people asking for you to help them. It's um, con yeah, constant. It's constant. And you know what? People are um really polite saying I hate to ask. I'm, um, yeah. I'm sorry for even bugging you. I see your name everywhere. And I'm so grateful that you're everywhere. And so people just say, if you see a window of opportunity for me, um, you know, I'd be welcome to share your brand and promote you and stuff. And uh, so we look at it and we look at our, everybody and see what they're, you know, I watch them in interviews. I check them out. I see if I want them on my team. You know what I mean? So if they're good, they're honest, and they're winning, and they're, you know, a cheerleader in their own right, I'm, I want them on my team, you know? So. And you picked a good one last year with the champion in, uh, in Trey and Laps, which seeing you guys, that was the coolest, one of the coolest things was just like he's, he's coming over from the dirt world and literally not even three years in, he's already on a championship, in a championship of, uh, car and um without that if i'm not mistaken uh you know trayton's plans really were up in the air they weren't going to be able to finish out the season and he, i just thought, championship i just what he needed to um 
you know, to finish. And I said, I can help you, you know, and if you get somebody else that can come on bigger and better, then I don't have no problem taking my name off, you know? Yeah. So I just help them just every week. Their and family has been really good helping too, though. Like it's going back and yeah, forth. Now. It's it's a it's a really amazing reciprocal assistance on on both and, parts. And same with Steckley. I mean, I got to know him, so so now I'm teamed up with him too a little, and they're all going um, to the U.S. Yeah. So you know what? I'm supporting them, and I and I I always say I want to be a tiny bit of their su success. That's really all I want, and they're the stars. But, you know, for them to drag me along and be a little bit successful with them, I like it, you know. I'm sure that's reciprocal. I'm, uh, that's a mutual feeling, I think, as they're all watching this GSR brand heading for the moon. I mean, that's, uh, I mean, as I said, the track itself is already a destination and you're building a destination race team at every level of the sport, which what more can you ask of a guy? I mean, that's, uh, as I said, for the love of racing and you're, you're the guy that, dug the hole in the ground to make the track what it was and you're still giving back to this day so i mean it i know you've already said like the your your family is very tight in it like who all like can you put a you can't even put a list of names of that that made you who you are today but i mean are there tina is amazing working at the track like she mm -hmm. is one of the she's the brains behind all of the operations when it comes to yeah she does so i do the manual manual labor and she yeah. does all of the paperwork yeah so, so still working out that way good well we have to talk about clinton not just because he's the guy that i report to at g4's tv but <laughs> um one of the guys who has and again you talked about helping the next generation helping and you guys have a diamond there with uh with clinton jeffrey because he's done the same for us adam ross same for us mm -hmm. um greg uh spencer the entire team at g-force tv are just amazing and and it's become a weekly event that you have to watch g-force tv or go to the racetrack it it it, it is that is what you do on friday nights yeah they're fantastic they're funny <laughs> they're hilarious they're uh clinton's fun to work with <laughs> yeah 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 they run stuff by me and you know i don't i just say if you think it's a great idea do it yeah but it's gonna cost this much i said is it gonna work they're like yeah it's gonna work all right we'll do it they're like i ain't spending money like they're just and now look at it's here i yeah. seen that up uh, all of the drivers here taking pictures and stuff. They got beautiful equipment now. They got nice light show and it's really come along. We, production we rushed back yesterday just to do an interview with him. Yeah. So yeah. We're messaging and we're almost there. The guys stayed late to do it. It was, it was really incredible. I brought my eldest son down uh, to one of your buildings there. I don't know if it was last winter or the winter before for at any rate uh for one of tj's uh valhalla uh tournaments and and just the shop itself like like i say being in the trades and, and in road building like i work in a shop where i like having nice white walls bright lights and it, like the atmosphere in which everybody's working there it, it's just made for efficiency and just kind of a good working atmosphere in terms of all that like you it's cleaner than a hospital and it's just who wouldn't want to work in that? So, I mean, kudos to you as a boss man for, for providing that kind of an environment to, to how many people do you employ? Can I ask? Is that. Um, I'm totally around 250, yeah. <clears throat> maybe a little bit higher than that. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of people have a lot of crucial jobs to do. Mm -hmm. I am in a position now where I kind of sit back and, and support wherever it's needed right so i just continuously do my rounds and if i hear squeaky squeak squealing coming from somewhere i come in and grease them up you know yeah i'll just help where i'm needed now so um but everybody's doing their job and i i don't micromanage i i just say hey i'm not a babysitter you got a job to do you do it we should be fine so 
Well, due to the size of the company, that's kind of what it should be at that stage, right? Where you are just going where your attention is required or somebody will be like, hey, Glenn, I need you here for this. But then, like, in terms of it, that's kind of the idea that you would like, right? That the company and the people that you trust with these duties do take care of themselves without you having to babysit because you're kind of beyond that now where you don't have to hold everybody's hand, right? Or that's the goal. I just got to trust what they're doing. Yeah. And and I've always said to Chantel, I said, I give them enough rope, and if they hang themselves, then they take themselves out of the picture. So yeah. that's a great analogy. Prefer- like exactly, you give <laughs> them all the tools they need. Yeah, <laughs> you give them all the tools they need to do a great job with it, and and yeah, and you, Chantel. I mean, being able to promote this and like help make this a destination. I mean, that's got to be pretty gratifying on your end too. I, I think the two of us working together really like he's he's amazing with social media as well. So the two of us, I think that building GSR has been fun for us. You know, some of the videos that we make, they're yeah. fun. We have fun yeah. doing it. That last one was very fun. I thought that was great. It's um, fun. Oh, of course, Glenn getting scared by the 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 uh, the no, the um, drag racing, which I thought was fantastic. And you know what? But I keep going back to your videos because they are fun. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what people want. It's it's not just, yeah, racers can show clips of the cars and stuff, but it's the personalities behind it as well. It's seeing who you guys really are behind the scenes. You know, it, yeah. it that's that's what makes people interested. And you guys are like, I don't know, did Glenn Styers ever think he would be a social media star too? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't part of the plan. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are. <laughs> I took a little bit of a break. I don't know. People probably noticed, but I took a little bit of a break from TikTok for a little while because it became a lot mm-hmm. you know, with, with everything else that we have. She's so fussy on her video. I, I, I just, I just go like this and put a song to it. Done. It takes me she a long. She spends time. like two hours doing an editing yeah. and video, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I yeah. had just a little bit of a break, but now racing season's coming up, and I'm like, okay, now we need mm-hmm. to get back. In. So Don't tell us like Cam, I'm like Glenn. I just kind of point and shoot. <laughs> Literally the same experience. Yeah. You, yeah. There you go. Um, Less razzle dazzle. <laughs> it's uh, this has been one of the biggest honors for us to have both of you guys on the show. I mean, that there, there's a name that we've wanted to have on the show for a while. It's been Glenn Styers, and to have. Uh, Chantel along to tell us all the the juicy gossip as well is fantastic um and uh, to have both of you guys together and what you guys are doing for motorsports especially what you did for for trait and laps pitch last year to me obviously that uh, I was a huge fan of his and to see that you guys stepped up and helped him um in that battle for the championship uh you know is um, is amazing and all you guys have done for with G-Force and uh, with Hoshuik and Speedway, not just here, but also racing uh, south of the border as well, um, getting countless names uh, to come up and race. I mean, to see Stuart Friesen come in uh, to the NASCAR Canada Series, uh, to see uh, the, uh, you know, a countless amount of racers come up from the U.S. to come and race at Oshweek and Speed. You made it a destination. It's not just a track in Canada. It is the track in Canada for the dirt side to go to. And you've had even the NASCAR Canada series come and be a part of it for three seasons. So, I mean, as on a personal level, we just want to say thank you. Um, it's such an, an honor to have both of you guys on here to talk with you guys and to see what you guys are doing is just phenomenal. And, uh, we, we have to try and catch up a little bit. There's, there's, there's a little bit to, to go before we can get up to get in the race teams, but, uh, it's, uh, it's so cool to see you, uh, you guys doing what you're doing. Yeah, I think, I think this, um, the big, I think one of the biggest things that happened was when Kyle Larson got in trouble with NASCAR and he got kicked out. Well, that's where I reached out to him and, you know, cause his funding was done. He lost all his sponsors. Mm-hmm. And so I called him up and I said, what do you need? And, uh, he said, just help me get to the races. That's all you need to do. And so that's what I ended up doing. And he had a record year. He won the most, his record will probably never be broken. And, um, and now when they're doing all of these, um, highlight reels and videos, you got GSR in a front wing and, um, it's just been really, really incredible to 
to again be a tiny part of his success. I mean, he was successful and he was going to be a superstar no matter what. Mm-hmm. But to be a part of that when everybody kicked him to the curb was uh was it was like I, I just can't even believe it, you know. Pretty cool to see the GSR on Kyle Larson's chest, that's for sure. <laughs> I him his old suit and he wore it for the chili bowl. That's yeah. pretty rad. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I, and I and I hate bothering him. You know, you go to the races and stuff. I I, I mean, I even feel awkward. He comes up and talks to us, right? And and I'm like, how, how come we're talking to us? You know, five hundred got his kids and <laughs> yeah, Stop yeah. You had a video. I remember the seeing the video of of the drivers walking by. Uh, and yeah, I was recording, and the phone went. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, uh, thank you guys so much for coming on the show tonight. All the best success for, for 2024. We can't wait to see you guys out at the racetrack this year. And, uh, Glenn can't wait to see you ripping off those top tens, uh, top fives and get up there for a win out in the NASCAR Canada series this year as well. It's, it's, um, it's, it's been really difficult to, uh, build that trust back with these asphalt cars, Mm -hmm. um, time trialing better now. Um, just, just the guys are learning me and and I, i'm just gonna keep moving forward i mean i was always last so the only way i can go is forward right <laughs> i also think that people don't understand the the dedication that glenn has put into this yes. and from i mean when we met and his crash he couldn't even see in the daylight he he couldn't go upstairs. He couldn't walk. So I had the stagger stuff. I couldn't walk stairs or nothing. He's really come from way down here, not even thinking that he was going to be able to race again, to you know hitting the podium again. And I think it's really important that people understand that he's never given up, yeah, regardless I, of what's happened. He's always stayed. He he believes in himself, and that's. I would go to the gym, and. I'd last five minutes trying to do anything and I'd sleep for two days after. Yeah. That's how, that's how, that's it was how, rough. He's been through a lot and he's come yeah. a very long way. Yeah. It was, it was, it was scary actually, mm-hmm. you know, to think about how, uh, how like, like I can't even describe the shakingness that I had, like even trying to drink a water, but I'd be like, it was, it was shook up pretty good. Mm-hmm. Well, the grit and determination that you obviously want it that bad that you're you're putting the time in, getting yourself in the right shape upstairs and in the body and everything, and uh, and of course putting all the parts and pieces with you uh, to to move forward, as you said, and walk before you run. Now that uh, you're kind of getting yourself comfortable in those cars, you're you're ready to start picking up the pace, I'm sure, and uh, and you're hungry for it. So we're here for it to to watch, and we'll be rooting for you all the way. No, I can jump in. I haven't been in Schrader's car and I don't know how long I can jump in it and be, I can be right up to speed within no time. Like it's, it's, it's amazing how fast I can get up there, you know? So that's, that's good for the swagger and for the confidence upstairs, right? You can yeah. do this and you're going to do it. And so to show off the, to Schrader, yeah. let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> do a little flexing on Kenny there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was fun. It was That great. was my favorite part. <laughs> oh well uh glenn styers and Chantel, thank you so much for being a part of the stickers and scuffs podcast this week best of luck in 2024 thank you knuckles yeah <laughs> <It's always- laughs>